Yeah, the, the, the toppings, yeah, would probably be a, a, a series of check boxes because each one is independent. You could get pepperoni and mushrooms, or you could get mushrooms and not pepperoni. Right. Uh huh. Well, check the name of the field and check the values that you're giving it. The, the sheet specifies what you need to name the field and what you need to pass as a value for it. Well, we can look at it in, in, in lab if you have questions. Do, do you want me? You want me to go have a seat so you can continue the lecture? Or, well, that's okay. Yeah, I, I know, but I mean, it's it's kind of difficult to help without seeing her code, right? You're telling what you did, and that's fine, but that may have absolutely nothing to do with what she's doing. All right, that's that's okay. It's okay. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, going to continue to talk about tables today. Um, tables being uh, a way of representing data that has rows and columns like you would have in an Excel worksheet. And we covered sort of the basic tags associated with tables and we're going to expand it for a few other um, tags. And we're going to talk a little bit about accessibility and we're going to talk a little bit about styling. This is the example that we had last time. All right, this table here. And if you look at it, we had table proper, each row consists of a TR tag, so tables are comprised of rows. Each column then is either a TH or a TD tag, and things will line up based on position. So in other words, we have four TD tags in each row, other than the first row where we have four TH tags for table header. So therefore, this is going to, the third TH is going to line up over the third TD, the second is going to line up over the second, and so on. So, this is what we end up looking like. All right? Now, as far as styling goes, remember that. Almost anything that we talked about as far as styling goes for other things can apply to tables as well. All right, so we change the background color, we change the colors of the TH, um, we, we can set the size of it, we can set the size relative versus uh, absolute, um, and you know, we, can, we can do all the things that you can do to other um, tags via CSS, we can do um, to tables as well. A few things that we can do, if you remember, in this current example, we give the width of the TH to be 25%. If we don't give any width to any TH or any TD, the browser sizes them based on the amount of content in them. What if I wanted for example, if I wanted to manually set some of these columns, what if I wanted to make day, for example, small and leave a lot of space for class? How could I, how could I make one column smaller than what the browser wants to make it? You could use an ID or you could use a class. All right. Remember, remember what your hooks are as far as styling things. Your hooks are HTML tags, IDs, classes, and then in various combinations, 
of those, of those things. So, I couldn't use a TH because a TH would hit all of them. So, if I wanted to make the day column narrower, I could go in and then put in a style for day. and maybe make the style 10% of the available space. And that way that column becomes smaller. Interesting, it does not, oh, I put a minimum width on the TH of 100 pixels. I want to get rid of that. I was wondering why it didn't make it even smaller still. There we go, if I want to make that column narrow. What if I don't want to make sure that these don't run together? What can I do? I could make them wider to be sure, but what else? Well, you, you, you generally avoid using line breaks because you can usually um, do it via CSS as opposed to HTML. You could add margins, you could add paddings, and, and so on. So I could, for example, on a TH say, margin two pixels See what that does. Doesn't do anything. But I'll bet you padding will. Margin. All right, there we go. It made a little bit of extra space. And I could really increase the padding to make it more visible. And then I could put a padding on the TD as well. that gives some space around it. What if I wanted to put an underline over the, under the headers? If I wanted to put an underline between the heading, the, the row of headers and the data, how could I do that? What have we learned so far that's kind of like a border, right? So, I could go in and one new tag that we're going to look at is called the T-head tag. The T-head tag goes around all my heading rows. And I could go and I could say T head border three pixels red solid. That would put a border around it. Okay, that's a border all the way around it. What if I wanted the border to just be On the, uh, instead of a border going all the way around, what if I wanted um, just, to, just to be underlined underneath it? You could say border bottom, right? Because remember, you could set for any of these attributes in the box model, there's a top, a right, a bottom, and a left. So if I can say border bottom, Three pixel red solid. 
I then get just the line underneath that. The point of this is, is that there's so much flexibility that you have with CSS to change the look of the page or the table or whatever. It's just a matter of finding the right combination of things. And the things that you have to remember for any of any CSS is the selector that says what gets the rule and then finally the attributes that I want to change. So I want to select that. All right. There's also a T body that represents all the data. And what if I wanted a blue line underneath each of the data rows? How could I do that? Border bottom. All right. What would my selector be? Okay. Let, let's try that. That will kind of get us there, but not exactly. So we'll refine it a little bit. All right, that put a bottom border underneath the bottom of the T-body section. What if I wanted it underneath every, under, underneath every row? What would I do? I could put a class on each of them. I could give each one of these a class of something, but there is a probably more straightforward way to do it. Well, I can combine selectors, and I can say T-body, T-R. And what that says is every TR that's in the T body section gets a blue underline. Sure. Sure. In fact, let's do that. Let's put let's put so it looks more like a, a grid. All right. So let's go and let's say going to say T body TR TD border right one pixel and I'm going to make it a different color just to be obvious I'll make it a two pixel green. Whoops. One pixel green solid. All right. And there it put it there. Now, what I could do. If I wanted, if I did not want that border at, on the last one, you know, notice there's no border on this one. If I wanted no border on that one, I'd have to do something with a class. Like I could say, And then I could say everything that has a class of last 
I don't want any border right. I guess it doesn't matter if I just say zero pixels, that should be enough. I called the class wrong. You're absolutely right. I called it class. It should be last. And there, notice that there's grid lines going this way, but there's none at the, at the, on the last one. So that, something that you can do to set the borders how you want to on this. Remember, with CSS you can virtually change any aspect of the page to get it to look exactly how you want. It's just a matter of knowing um, two things about CSS. The first thing is knowing the selectors, how the selectors work. And the selectors tell, the selectors define what on the page gets this particular style rule. All right. Um, then you have the attributes, and then you have how you control and how you change whatever aspect about the page that you want to change. So, selectors, again, this should be review, can either be an HTML tag, it can be a ID, it can be a class, or it can be a combination of things. This, with the dot, tells me everything with a class of last gets this style rule. The pound sign says the thing that has the ID of day gets this rule. T body, TRTD says any, within the T body section, any TR within it, any TDs within those TRs gets this rule. You can combine classes and, those and IDs to those. With IDs you typically don't because an ID is, 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 should be only one per page. So in other words, I could say TH day, pound sign day, and that's not going to make any difference. Whoops. All right, that doesn't make any difference. If I say TH pound sign day, or if I just say pound sign day. The reason it doesn't make any difference is that a day, uh, the ID of day, there's only one on a page anyhow. So using the ID is going to be enough to point to that one thing. And if I were to say T D day, then that's not going to work. Right? Why not? Well, because the thing that has an ID of day is not a TD, it's a TH. So usually with IDs, specifying the ID is enough. With classes, you can get clever and you can make different classes work different, you can make the same class work different ways depending on the tag uh, on it. Let me say, let me define uh, a, a class of important. All right. Let's say some of these things are particularly important. All right. So I'm going to define a class of important. And and I'm going to make the font bigger. Let's say for some reason the 
time of the lab I want to indicate is important. So I could say class equals important. And sure enough, as you'd imagine, it's going to get a bigger font. All right, so that's big. I could then define a different style rule for rows or for, let's say, for rows or for headers that I wanted to be important. All right, maybe an important header I want to be... Um, have a different background color. All right. So I could do TH important makes the font twice as big. Or I'm sorry, TD important makes the font twice as big. TH important makes the background color yellow. All right, so there I have the same class, but I could treat it differently depending on which tag I've designated as important. THs that I say important, I want to show one way. TDs that I say are important, I want to show another way. All right, so again, that's, a, that's probably a more typical case. So with IDs, you can do it, but since an ID is unique anyhow, you simply typically just say, well, the thing that has this ID, that's what I want to do with it. With classes, though, since classes, more than one element can have the same class, all right, it, it makes more sense to say TDs that have this class get this rule, THs that have this class get another rule, all right? You know, um, CSS, the building blocks of it are, are very simple selectors and attributes. But when you start getting to all the different ways that you can define selectors and you can define them in combination and you can say stuff that is in this section gets treated one way, stuff that gets in another section treat another way, you really can have tons of flexibility on, on what you can do. For example, let's go and let's put, let's make a copy of the table And let's put it in an aside tag. So just for laughs, I'm going to make a copy of the entire table. So we're going to have two tables on this page. One of them is going to be in the section. One of them is going to be in the aside. So we look at this, we have two tables. And they look the same, right? But what I can do is I can say, Let's get a little floating action going here. Pardon me? Okay.
oh, I'm viewing this in IE. And I didn't put in the HTML5 shiv, no wonder. All right, there we go. So what I did is I put the two tables in different sections, and I can say tables that are in the section, I want to treat one way. Tables that are in the aside, I want to treat another way. And notice the floating goes. <laughs> Interesting. Until it overlaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it. In a way, it doesn't matter if it's supposed to happen. It does happen. It's your job to deal with it. Now, how could we deal with it? One of the things that comes in handy is a minimum width. All right? So we could say, like on this one, we could say on a table, a table within our section, minimum width, 400 pixels, let's say. And then, I'll be darn, it still does, does the same thing. That's weird. Oh. Oh. oh, wait a minute. The sign has a width of that. The table has a width of that. Ah. Need to put the minimum width on the section. There we go. So now it fits alongside till it hits the 400 mark and then it drops down below. And then I can say a side like that and get back to how I had it before. So it's all a combination of selectors and attributes that determine this. Remember, as I mentioned before, that however your page looks depends on two things. It depends on the default rules of the browser and it depends on the CSS code that you put in. Remember also that it's possible you can give it conflicting instructions. So for example, if I were to say TDs, there's four TDs in this, uh, in each row. If I were to say each one of them takes up 50% of the table, well, I've given, it a, a, I've given impossible instructions for it. 
All right. So the browser will make do and will figure something out. All right. Um, all right. Let's look at a couple other things dealing with tables. All right. One of them is there is a caption. And this is something that's good to use in general, but it's especially good to use for accessibility purposes because the caption explains what the purpose of the table is. And it's better than just having a header over top of it because the header could be associated with every, anything. Whereas the caption is, is part of the table. So I could say Zeller's schedule fall 2014. And then I get a caption that is centered. All right. Now, yeah, go ahead. It's like if you did this. Yeah, um, I don't think that's going to work the way. Let's see how it does work. Sort of does. The better thing to do would be to use a caption because a caption is tied to the table. Now, you don't like the way the caption looks, you can always go and change it. So I could say, I want. captions to be, or I can do this. Let me put, let me put a caption on the, the second table as well. And I'm going to put an ID on this table. I could say within the ID of main, any caption gets a font size of 1.8 EM. And that gives you the caption size like that. Or I could say color red. So again, to answer the question that was asked before, yes, you can mix and match with these, with these IDs. And this would be a case where it would be reasonable to do it. All right? To say captions within the thing that has an ID of main. Notice that caption's red, this caption is not. CSS, again, is built on a, a, a very simplistic set of rules, really. You have what gets the, the rule, then you have pairs of attributes and values. But the way that you piece things together can be really involved and in, in, in allows you the flexibility to get the page to look exactly the way that you want it to. All right. Let's see. What if I wanted... Uh, again, maybe in the, I'm going to get rid of, no, I'll keep it there. What the heck. Uh, in the old days, you had computer printout paper that was alternating green and white bars uh, in the paper. And it was called green bar paper. Let's see if I can find an example of it, because it's probably easier to show than to describe. Probably have all seen this kind of computer paper, or, not, or I say, if not, maybe your grandparents have seen this kind of computer paper. 
Uh, probably. They probably do for like organizations that run like big financial reports and stuff like that. Government work, yeah. Yeah, big binders of stuff. Well, what's the purpose of the green bars? Help, help you read it. Again, is, is, is you read across a row of numbers. If it's a wide paper, and these were typically wide. I don't know if it says anywhere the width of this paper. Um, your eye could go up or down. So you could be reading line one, line one, line one, and then your eye sort of drifts and could be reading line two. And you could get the wrong results for that. So you might want to call Smith, but as you look down, you're reading Jones's phone number or something like that. You can do something similar to that in HTML tables too. Now, this table is small enough where it shouldn't matter. But if you had a table that had a bunch of cells and it went all the way across the screen, you'd have the potential to do that as well. Now, one of the things that we did is we put those border lines, and that should help quite a bit. But we could also alternate the color of the rows. How do you suppose we can alternate the color of the rows? You're warm. We could put a class, right. We could put a class on them. Um, why we couldn't use IDs? We could, but let's imagine we had 50 rows. I'd have to define 25 different IDs, because remember, an ID is unique. All right? A class can be shared among elements, though. All right? A class I could define something and, and then put it on every other one, and then I only have the one class. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you might say, well, it's kind of tedious to do that. Keep in mind that in more involved web development scenarios, you actually write a program to generate tables. And it's easy in a program to go and do the alternating bit. But in a nutshell, what you do would be something like this. I'm going to define a class of alt. And I'm going to make the background white. And then what I can do is on alternating rows, I can give a class of alt. One thing to notice that I am giving my classes descriptive names that represents why I'm using them and not describing the appearance. So for example, I'm not saying white background here, right? Because what if I decided to change alternating rows to be a yellow background? It would be really confusing looking at the code to see, hmm, the thing that has a class of white background is appearing yellow. All right? Whereas if I say alternating, well, then alternating, it's always going to be the alternating row. And OK, alternating this time is, is white. If I change it to yellow, then it will be yellow. So if we look at this now, we have I must have only did. Oh, I put in the end tag of the other one. Oh, right, OK. There we go. All right, there we go. And now we have it alternating going across. And again, this table is kind of narrow, so it really probably doesn't help all that much. But if the table is wider, that would, that would make it a little more readable and a little more attractive. There is one further section that we have not talked about, and that's the T-foot section. And that would be like if I had totals or something like that. In this case, there's really nothing to add up. But I could say that I am teaching four classes. So I could define a TR. I really only have one TD, though. Uh, 
All right. Notice what it did. It lined it up, since I only have one TD, it lined it up in the first cell. So it sort of crammed everything together. What you can do with table cells is you can do a similar thing that you do in Excel. I don't know if you remember from taking uh, 121. You can merge cells together in Excel. You can merge cells together in tables as well. And the way you do that is by saying the call span. Call span equals four. Means that this is one column, but it goes across four columns. This one TD goes across four columns. You put eight, yeah, however many you wanted to go across. In fact, if I wanted to have if I wanted to say total of four classes, total of two labs, I could do this. Call span equals two. Call span equals two. And then I could say total of two labs. And then the first TD takes up the first two columns, the second TD takes up the, the last two. I can then go and apply styling to the T foot if I want to make the footer section look different. So I could say T foot background red I'm not going for a beautiful looking page here. I'm just trying to demonstrate some things. Color white. Yeah. If I wanted to skip a column. All right, good question. What if I wanted it to be in the second and third column instead of in the first and second column? You can do this. There's a special symbol. That stands for non-breaking space. That's different than ordinary white space. That says I actually want to put a space here. So I would create a table column that would have a space in it. I would create a second table column at the end that I had a space in. And I would then say the call span of two. Um, that's not really wide enough to demonstrate, I can, I'll add some more text. And there you see it goes over columns one and two. Or I'm sorry, columns two and three. One more thing dealing with tables. And that is accessibility. All right. I'm going to wrap this up today. Um, it will take, uh, I'll spend a couple more minutes talking about accessibility. And then if you have questions about it, we can go over it. Because we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. So I'm going to give you the quick explanation. All right. If you look at this cell, and you can see you automatically know that's the class for Monday at 1050. All right. I'll tell you what, we'll talk about this on Monday. I don't I don't want to I don't want to rush through. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. We'll, we'll do a rare instance of quitting a couple minutes early. All right. Uh, but there's a way the, the point is to kind of set this up. 
that because you can see, you can look at this table and say, this is a header for it, this is the uh, row that it belongs to. A blind person, though, when the screen reader reads the screen, it's just going to read it as a date, time, class, room, Monday, 9, 9, 15. It's, it's hard to keep track, especially if it was a table of all numbers. Now, here we have dates and words and all that mixed together, so that makes it actually a little easier. But if it's reading just a row of numbers, let's say we had January through December sales, and it was like, you know, 500,000, 510,000, 520,000. If that's being narrated to you, it's difficult to tell. 520,000, was that for March of 2013, or was that June of... A, a person can see, can look in the row and column and determine what, what month and year it is. But someone that can't see is being read to them, and it's easy to lose track. So there's, there's techniques that you can use that will help the visually impaired and their assistive technology to match up the rows and columns. And that, that's what we'll talk about on Monday, and then we'll get into JavaScript. All righty. That's all I had. Time for lamb.